And the Lord appeared unto Isaac and said, Dwell in this land, and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants I give all these lands, and I will perform the oath which I swore to your father Abraham. And I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven, and in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Sons of Promise, Isaac and Jacob. Shalom and welcome to our program. I'm Miles Weiss. And I'm Catherine Weiss, and we want to welcome you back to our series, Sons of Promise. Yeah, it's great to be learning about Isaac and Jacob, and not only so, seeing how the line of covenant comes through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, mm -hmm. who is Israel. Mm -hmm. You're going to see that change. And Israel is the nation today, the Jewish people. It, it wasn't totally automatic. They right. had to believe into the call that God yes. placed. Same with us. Yes. There, is a, there was a promise that God, yes. and, but Abraham believed into it. Then right. Isaac did. Yes. And now Jacob just has. Right. You know, he's had an encounter with the Lord um, as himself, the access to heaven, the right. angel of the Lord coming up and yep. down the ladder. Yeah. And in, in um, John 1, 51, it right. says that Jesus is that access. Right. He is that ladder. He said to Nathaniel, you'll see greater things than this. You'll see the heavens open and right. the angels of God descending and ascending with the Son of Man. And, you know, all throughout human history, mm religion, spirituality, the occult, every which away, people are trying to get to God mm -hmm. or who they imagine God to be. And then we find out, lo and behold, 2,000 years ago, God comes to man. Amen. And that's the way it happens. We don't come to God because we can't. He made access right. just as Yeshua did at the cross. So Jacob is foreshadowing that right. and seeing that in this story. And that's where we're going to pick up. We're going to actually begin to see the next generation of the love affair. As we're, we pick up our biblical narrative, let's go to the drama where we're going to see uh, Jacob meeting Rachel. The journey from Beersheba to Haran had been long and arduous. Along the way in Bethel, Jacob had experienced a heavenly encounter in a dream where the Lord said, I will give this land to you and all the families of the earth shall be blessed because of you and your descendants. Now nearly 500 miles from Beersheba, Haran was finally in sight. This was the land of his mother's father, Bethuel, and his mother's brother, Laban. Now there were shepherds in the field tending their flocks. A well was nearby, and in keeping with the tradition of the day, a rock covered the well until the evening hours. Achai, מאין באתם? חרן. חרן, מאתם על אחד שמו לבן? כן, אנחנו מכירים אותו. השלום לו? כן, הנה ביתו רחל. שם עם הכבשים. So Jacob picked up his feet and walked and went. It was about a 500 mile journey to Padan Aram. The rabbis say that his heart lifted up his feet, which is a really cool way of saying it, because Nehemiah 8.10 tells us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Talking about the joy of the Lord, look up behind me, we're in the marketplace, we're in the shuk, it's Shabbat, it's the Friday morning leading up to Shabbat, and as Catherine said, it's like Christmas every weekend. Every time Shabbat comes around, the whole city is just bustling, getting ready for Shabbat tonight when things will slow down, quiet down, and at sundown, the city will completely get quiet and rest and family and God and love will completely overtake the place. It's really quite awesome. I imagine it's what America was like on a Sunday a hundred years ago, but it's like that now here in Jerusalem. This is a picture of the Sons of Promise. Incredible. how. Man opens the door to the spirit, and we can choose which spirit we're going to let in. Will it be God? Will it be man? Will it be anti-God? And we see that the inquiry about who Laban is is coming now from Jacob, and he's going to ask about Laban, his relative, and we're going to find out that the deceiver will be deceived, that Jacob, in his natural man as a deceiver, is going to be deceived by Laban, and that'll unfold in the drama a little bit further down the road. 
There are three mentalities at work in the world at all time. The barbarian mentality, the Greek mentality, and the Hebraic mentality. And there's an interplay between the three of them. And so they're always at work to see which one will have preeminence, which one will have the, the dominance. We're hoping that the Hebraic will always win out. It's God's point of view. Yesterday, I hit a hard spot here in Jerusalem uh, emotionally, and we ran into, providentially, some people that Catherine had led to Israel years ago. They were walking in the joy of the Lord, and they laid their hands on me, prayed for me. God just filled my spirit with His spirit. And that's the, the spirit that you feel here today. You can sense that there was no chance meeting. And for Jacob, there were no chance meetings at all. God was ordering his steps, just as he ordered my steps here in Yerushalayim yesterday. And God is ordering Laban's steps. And he's going to bring him into his destiny in spite of the flesh, in spite of the deception of Laban, in spite of what's coming to him in the natural. We're going to see that God is ultimately the sovereign and he's going to have his way. We'll be back after this. No, no, no. הנה ביתו רוכב, שם עם הכבשים. For insightful perspectives on Israel and Bible prophecy, ask for our free monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter. At levitt.com you can read the newsletter, watch the TV program, or visit our online store. Stay current with us on social media via Facebook and Twitter. Come with us on a tour of Israel or Petra, or a cruise to Greece and Ephesus. Please contact us for more information. Now Rachel was a shepherdess, and she brought her father's sheep to the area of the well. באתי מרחוק, מבאר שבע הדרומית. סבי חי כאן בארץ זו, וסיפר לי על הארץ ועל אנשיה. שמי הוא יעקב. אלוהי אבי יצחק הביאה אני הנה. אמי רבקה, אחות לבן אביך, ואני הגעתי לכאן בגללך, רחל. And Rachel ran to tell her father about this visitor from a foreign land, whose name was Jacob, the son of Isaac. Here we are Friday morning in Jerusalem, and it's, it's pre-Shabbat. It is beautiful here. The streets are hustling and bustling with women and men buying their last-minute things for Shabbat. My honey bought me flowers. It's, it's customary to buy flowers, fresh bread, and to be ready for the, week ahead, the weekend ahead. It's such a blessing, and we're so grateful to bring you these live shots from Jerusalem. The flavor, the color, the smells are just breathtaking. Thank you for my flowers. You're welcome. <laughs> and that's exactly what Yaakov did. It says in the scripture, Vayishak Yaakov Rachel. He kissed her, and it's the first and only time in the Bible that non-married people kissed. It was not a, a kiss of passion, it was a kiss of greeting and a kiss of, of love because he realized that he had fulfilled his mom's wishes and found someone that was of the tribe, found someone that was in the family, which was a big deal because the, the desire of his mother's heart was that he would marry within the tribes of Israel, within the family. Unlike his brother Esau who went to the Hittites to marry and to the sons of Ishmael, he found his bride, Rachel, Rachel, among the family members, the distant family members. And it's the only time that happened. He sees her as a shepherdess. You know, there's so much in scripture about shepherding and shepherdesses and, and the sheep. And isn't it incredible that Jacob, in a Samson-esque moment, he moves the stone off the well, and as she is able to water the sheep. And you know, there's something in that for you and for me, because it's only when the stone is rolled away that the sheep can be watered. We see that every time we go to the garden tomb, and there's that imprint of the stone that has been rolled away, and there's the preciousness of knowing that the tomb is empty, because when the stone is rolled away, 
the sheep can be watered. That's you and that's me. We really see God's government coming into play here. Even though it's taking time, God is going to have his way in this story. There are always these turnarounds in the Bible. There's always a time when there's difficulty and hardship and you think that the, the good guys are going to lose out and there may be a long wait before God's justice comes, but there always is a time when God's justice comes around. Think about Pharaoh oppressing the Hebrew people for 400 years and they cried out and it seems that God was deaf, but when his time came, deliverance came. And when Haman came to destroy the Jewish people in Persia and God turned it around and Mordechai was victorious and the Jewish people were spared once again. And even in the New Testament, when Saul of Tarsus consented to Stephen's stoning and God, just some time later, Paul himself was stoned, not unto death because God had a purpose for Paul and a purpose to release through his life. It's always about destiny. It's always about your destiny and mine. You know, Jacob is about to be deceived by Laban, and isn't it amazing that the same deception that he used on Isaac when Isaac's eyes were dim are about to come back on him as he is going to be full of wine and in the darkness, and he's going to be deceived about which bride he is with. And so what goes around comes around in the Bible, but it's always coming back to the sovereignty of God and the purposes of God. Laban is going to change his wages 10 times, 10 the number of testing, but God is going to have his way and Jacob is going to be the father of this nation. Abraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Jacob, a son of promise leading to this, the sons of promise alive and well and back in their land. We'll be back after this. <laughs> Hello, I'm Wayne Fournier, and I've been a supporter of Zona Levitt Ministries for many years. You know, this ministry brings you the weekly television program Zona Levitt presents, the website levitt.com, and the Levitt Letter, a free monthly news magazine. How has this happened without the support of a church, a denomination, or some endowment paying the bills? The Lord has seen fit to use regular people like you and me. We're the ones who keep this ministry going. You know, asking for contributions can be awkward, but not asking can be detrimental. On several occasions, our founder, Zola Levitt, would surprise viewers when he would say, we don't need your gifts of funds right now. Give to your home church or to another ministry. When we need support, we'll tell you, but we're fine right now. Such a statement sounded ludicrous, but it established the fact that Zola Levitt Ministries is not trying to make a fortune out of ministry. The resources and biblical materials we offer are those that are helpful to our viewers' spiritual walk. Zola went home to the Lord seven years ago, but Miles and Catherine Weiss continue to sound the call for the church to recognize that God is not finished with the Jewish people and Israel remains his timepiece. When I heard the gospel from a messianic perspective, it strengthened my faith in God, but it was something I recognized as being worthy of my financial support. If you see this outreach as worthy of your financial support, please call us at 1-800-WONDERS. Visit us online at levitt.com or write to us at Zola, Box 12, 268, Dallas, Texas. 75225. We depend on your financial sustenance. Thank you. Now let's go back to the program, Sons of Promise, Isaac and Jacob. Jacob loved Rachel and agreed with her father Laban to work seven years in exchange for the right to marry her. 
Laban agreed. But at the last moment, he deceived Jacob, giving him his older daughter Leah instead. Undeterred, Jacob agreed to work yet another seven years for Rachel, the daughter he deeply loved. אני לא מבין מדוע עלינו לעבור את זה. אבל איזה מסע זה היה. חלום על מלאכים יורדים ועולים בבית אל, ועכשיו לפגוש מלאך נוסף ברחל. אני כל כך מצטערת שהיה עלינו לחכות שנים רבות. אבי חונה אותי פעם אחת, אבל זה לא יקרה שוב, אני מבטיח. אני אוהב אותך. What a journey we've been on with Jacob, where he's sent out by his mom to go to Padan Aram. Padan Aram was known as a place filled with rogues. According to the rabbis, it was a rogues place, and Rachel was there almost as a lily among thorns. She was an unusually pure and righteous person. Even though she and Jacob would have their issues, she was a pure person in the midst of God's purposes. You know, it's interesting that there's consideration and questioning always about the the polygamy of the day you know Leah and Rachel and so many of these guys had so many wives or several wives God's pattern has always been one man and one woman going back to Genesis 224 in the garden we see it from the words of Yeshua in Matthew 19 and then even in, in Paul's writings the Holy Spirit through Paul in Ephesians 531 he speaks about the the process of coming together as one and it's one man one woman People are trying to change that, either through polygamy or open marriage or other kinds of marriage, but that's God's pattern. Always has been, always will be. That's the best. It's notable that in the, the, the deceiving that takes place from Laban and then the, the deceiving that takes place when Jacob goes in to see Leah, it's in the dark and it's the wine and the darkness. And it's really uh, spoken of even by Josephus, the historian. He says, Jacob was deluded by wine and darkness, deluded by wine and darkness. Well, you know, he who compares himself is not wise. We're supposed to have mercy on those that have gone before us because we are subject to like issues. And so God is merciful towards him and brings him through that first one to bring him to his wife. Eventually, he and Rachel will get together and they move from infatuation to mature love. It takes years to go from infatuation and love at first sight to a mature love. And that's the process that takes place in marriage. All along, we see Jacob's steps being ordered by God. It reminds me of Psalm 3115, which says that our times are in your hands. My times are in your hands. That's the psalmist speaking to the Lord. And I want to say that to you today, that whatever you're going through, whatever you're seeing unfold before you in your life. Your times, if you belong to Yeshua, your times are in God's hands. He'll be with you, He'll bring you through it, and He'll bring you into the next phase of your life because He's a God of covenant and He's a God of destiny. So just remember, your times are in His hands. You know, what a joy Jacob found when he found Laban's family. And then he saw the love of his life, Rachel. But then the test came when Laban put her behind the first daughter to come, Leah. Yeah. You know, there's so many tests that come in our life when yes. God promises us something and we see right. there's a plan. Right. But then the test comes. Yes. It's not automatic. No. Right. There's, uh, there's God's destiny for us. Uh -huh. Then there's a paying of a price right. and there's time. Maturity takes time. Um, it's just not always a straight line. Seven years yes. he worked. First round. First round. Yes. Second time. Yes. Another seven years. Yes. So 14 years yes. to get Rachel. Yes. And then the Lord gave him love for both of, yeah. of these. And, and out of the wives he built the 12 tribes. Right. And it's not God's design, right. but, it, but God worked it together for good. Yeah, exactly. That's right. a good way of looking at right. it. Right. You know, um, one of the things that we get to do when we go to Israel is we get to work with Todd Baker, who is the staff theologian for Zola Levitt Ministries. And he, oh, he has a ministry called To the Jew First. And whenever we go to Israel, Todd comes usually with a partner and they preach the gospel to the Jews and to the Arabs mm -hmm. alongside or parallel with 
our trip to Israel. And it's always wonderful to hear the fruit of what's going on with Todd and to hear how your funds, your benevolence funds that we have right. are helping to see the gospel go forward in our generation. I'm so grateful as a Jewish person yes. that the gospel is being preached once again, as it was at first, it's being preached again in Israel. So let's go to Mark Levitt's interview with Dr. Todd Baker. Well, hello from Ben Yehuda Street. I'm here with Todd Baker, the leader of our To the Jew First effort. Todd, how are you today? I'm doing great, Mark. It's uh, wonderful to be in Yerushalayim, the city of the great king, uh, bringing the gospel of Jesus back to his people, the Jewish people. Well, this trip marks 93 missionaries that our ministry has sent to Israel. And Todd, some folks believe that because American Jews may seem standoffish about hearing about their Messiah, that witnessing to Jewish Israelis must be very tough. What do you say about that? Well, on the contrary, each uh, time we come over here and carry out these outreaches three times a year, uh, the young people in particular seem to be more and more open to hearing about uh, Yeshua and reading the New Testament, looking at the evidence for Him being the Messiah. And I think part of the reason is as we draw nearer to the return of the Lord to Israel, uh, that partial blindness that Paul talks about in Romans 11 is lifting and as we know it will completely lift when they see Yeshua, Jesus coming to the Mount of Olives. But the fact that we're seeing it now is a good indicator that uh, His return is near and He's opening the hearts and minds of His people. You know, we're standing on a spot here where each day a blood mobile comes and receives donations of blood and this is one of Todd's favorite places to talk about the blood of Jesus, which he shed for Jew and Gentile alike. Yeah, uh, we tried to give blood this time, but uh, we couldn't because uh, the, the day cycle didn't work out. But we, uh, we definitely uh, do that when we can, and uh, I will do it again in the future. And like you said, it's a wonderful opportunity to work in the importance of blood in the Bible. Leviticus 17:11 says, without the shedding of blood, uh, there is no remission of sins, and uh, the life of the flesh is in the blood, and um, blood atonement. It, uh, the Old Covenant and its animal sacrifices point to the once for all perfect atoning sacrifice of Yeshua, and that's one of the uh, uh, main components in our witness uh, to the Jewish people over here because they're very familiar with the importance of blood, again, coming from uh, understanding and reading the Torah. Well, let's segue now to Todd in the trenches as he gives a Brit Hadashah and explains its significance to a Jewish Israeli. I'm here with Avi Chai, an Israeli, and uh, we've been sharing uh, with him Habes Rachel Yeshua HaMashiach, the gospel according to Jesus Christ. And uh, Avi, uh, you have read the Tanakh, or what Christians call the Old Testament, correct? Yeah, correct. Have you ever read the uh, Berit Hadashah or what Christians call the New Testament? No, I never read okay. it. Well, part of our ministry as an expression of love and gratitude to your people for giving us both Testaments of the Bible is to give you right. a complete Jewish Bible with the uh, Tanakh or the Old Testament and uh, the Berit Hadashah, the New Testament. Okay. And, in the, and the Messiah connects both of them together. In the Tanakh, you have prophecies very detailed prophecies about the Messiah. And then when you compare it with the life of Jesus in the New Testament, okay. I think you'll see that He is the Messiah. All right. Thank you very much. I you're, read it. you're welcome. You're welcome. And just in parting, uh, I like to say that when I look at an Israeli, I know that three things are true. One, uh, the God of Israel exists. Two, the Bible is true. And three, God keeps His promises. Okay. And your the Jewish people are proof of that. And uh, that's basically what we do over here is we bring Jesus back to the Jewish people, His people, give them an opportunity to learn about um, why Jesus is the Messiah and the historical proof given in the Berit Hadashah or the New Testament. Remember in Jeremiah 31, 31, God promises that He will make a new covenant, a Berit Hadashah with the house of Israel. and. Uh, thanks to you, thanks to your support, uh, we are able to bring the new covenant as the fulfillment of the old covenant to the Jewish people. God bless you. 
What a joy to be part of a ministry that ministers to the Jewish people yes. and sees salvation come. Yep, you know, it's really Galatians six ten says, "Do good to all men, mm -hmm. especially to the household of faith." And that's yeah. what has been a motto for you and I. Right. Is that not only do we bless Israel, yes. mass, national Israel, yes. but we make sure that we don't hide the best gift, which exactly. is the salvation. Exactly. And I love the way Todd does this. I like that when we get to see him in Israel, yeah. to see the fruit of his labors, to see the partnerships that go on, and really he's preaching to the Jews and the Arabs. Mm -hmm. We see people coming to faith and their lives being enriched. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's really meaningful. Right. It's something we get to do as a community, the Zola Levitt I think it's community. so important because there are a lot of ministries that are just touching the national, right. which a, is more of good, a political, yeah. but it's so important that right. the gospel is not hid yes. Yes. to your people. I agree. I totally agree. And I'm grateful that we get to be part of that. Yeah. Um, we really need to to recognize that this story, the Sons of Promise right. story, is really door to door, as the Bible says. It's generation to generation, mm -hmm. and it's ongoing today. Uh, it's going to increase as we see the day approaching. We're going to see more and more the light being shown throughout the world, and more people coming to know the Lord, and we're going to be looking up because our redemption draws close. So, till we see you again, as always, we like to close the program by reminding you, please, Shalu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Our resource on this program, Sons of Promise on DVD. For your donation of $65 or more, you'll receive all eight programs which recount the history of Abraham's family through Isaac and Jacob. God's eternal covenant with the children of Israel is revealed and proved faithful against the backdrop of the modern miracle of Israel. Call 1-800-WONDERS and ask for the Sons of Promise DVD or visit us at levitt.com. Our monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter, is free and full of insightful articles and news commentary from a messianic perspective. Visit levitt.com to find our newsletter along with current and past programs, our television schedule, and much more. Your donations to Zola Levitt Ministries help these organizations bless Israel. Please remember, Zola Levitt Ministries depends on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. This has been a paid program brought to you by Zola Levitt Ministries.